large project to share with you and that is this canvas painting that you can see here. So if you want to see how it's made then just keep watching. The canvas is a European A3 size which is about 30 by 40 centimeters large. Due to its size it took quite some time to make it but I didn't want this video to be too long and therefore I've sped it up a lot in order to fit all of it into a more viewable length. I hope you will enjoy it. The first thing I do is cover the whole canvas with a layer of white gesso. This will not only give me some texture but also prime the canvas and prepare it for the next layers. I bought this large jar of gesso at my locker craft shop and I'm spreading it out with a plastic palette knife from Ranger. But you could use anything with a flat surface. I'm using a palette knife rather than a paintbrush because I want these hard and raised edges that the knife gives me. Then I add a few drops of pearlescent acrylic paint. I'm simply splattering the color randomly over the canvas. For added texture I'm using some papers from an old book and I'm scrunching them up into a ball for an even more texture. To add some color and enhance all the fold lines I'm using my go-to distress ink which is in the color walnut stain. I love this ink for all kinds of distressing. I'm also cutting a piece of some white twine from Prima that I will use later. I unfold the papers and rip them into smaller pieces while waiting for my canvas to dry. For some added interest, I also add a few golden mica flakes to the wet paint. I don't bother with any additional medium to adhere the flakes since I know I will be adding more stuff on top and that will safely secure the flakes too. When the canvas is dry, I'm using matte medium to adhere all the papers to it and I'm not placing them in any particular order, I'm just putting them on there and some are skew and some are upside down, but that doesn't really bother me. I even prefer it this way because I don't want to decide beforehand which way is up and down on my canvas. And if I have text going in all directions, it won't matter how you hang it on the wall when it's done. I'm also adding the twine with the same matte medium and drying it with my heat gun until it's dry enough to touch. For some texture, I am using this stencil from Tim Holtz and Ranger Texture Paste. I tried using the plastic palette knife to pick up the paste, but I haven't used the paste in a very long time, so it was almost completely dried out. And the plastic wasn't strong enough to pick up the hard paste, so I took a metallic knife instead and managed to get some of the paste out. I made a couple of raised spots with the stencil, but the paste was too hard to work with that I didn't do as much as I had originally planned. I waited a few hours for the texture paste to dry and then I poured my colors onto the canvas. I'm using a mixture of distress paints in blue and teal and I'm using an old card to spread out the color. The colors I'm using are tumbled glass, evergreen bow, peacock, feathers and a little bit of chipped sapphire. The distress paints are very fluid and doesn't give me much of a texture but I love these colors and decided that the colors were more important than the texture I wanted. I'm sure there are plenty of great paints out there that you can use, but I've decided to use up my enormous stash of products before I start buying new stuff, which is harder than it might sound. And even though these blue paints are now as good as empty, I still have plenty of other colors I need to use, so expect a few paintings with much different colors in the future. As I move the paints around, I don't really like the white space that gets left in the middle of all that twine. So in order to try and blend in that better, I am using a moist baby wipe and pulling some color into the white areas. But obviously that made me lose the texture I had gotten from spreading the color with the card and I didn't like the way it started to look. So instead I take the baby wipe and gently blend the colors a little bit. When that doesn't work, I pull out the strings and throw them away. I'm not sure I like this better, but it's done and there's nothing more I can do about that than move on. After a while I figured the paint was dry enough to add another layer and I pull out some of the yellow and orange distress paints. As I add them to the corner I realize that the underlying paint isn't as dry as I expected and I really don't like the effect of the blending. Mixing the orange with the blue makes a green and this was not supposed to be green. So what I do is use the baby wipe and remove all the color. That however makes a lighter patch that I don't like either. So I pull in some of the color from above with the card I used before. It still doesn't look very good but it's okay since I will add color there later. As soon as the paint have fully dried, I can safely pour the orange and yellow paints onto the canvas. Then I do the same thing I did with the blue paints and I spread them out, this time with a palette knife. I also added a few spots of transparent crackle paint from Ranger. I think these paints have been discontinued, but there are other brands of crackle paints too, and I really like the effect that the crackling gives. My idea with the crackling paint here was that the orange paint on top would crackle and reveal the teal behind. After drying the distress paints a bit, I added a few drops of metallic paint in copper. Uh, when I added the orange and copper to the canvas, I had this image in my head of what it would look like, but the result was very far from what I had pictured. 
and I wasn't quite sure what to do with the canvas now. My usual last resort is to cover most of it in white, but I had promised myself that I would not make this canvas a white one. So instead I pulled out my dilution spray and added a few spritz of Calypso Teal. I'm not sure what I expected to happen, but as you can see all of it turned green. A horrible muddy green and not at all what I wanted. Since the distress paints are permanent once dry, it wouldn't have been a problem to spray this with water and then just wipe away the spray paint. But since I am an extremely lazy crafter, I obviously sprayed the canvas with Calypso Teal before the orange had dried completely. So I have no other choice than to work with all of this green paint. To lessen the effect of the spray paint, I dry the canvas completely and add more orange and yellow on top. This way I can hide the green underneath. And I also add a few streaks of Ranger Studio Paint in the color Classic Teal. I do this before the orange has dried, despite knowing that I shouldn't, but I really don't like the green and I can't stop painting until I've gotten rid of it. I do take care not to mix the orange with the teal though, and luckily it worked out. Then I add some water and let the paints run down the canvas. I also add drops of pearlescent paint in copper and tilt the canvas slightly so the paints create lines as they drip towards the table. When the paint on the canvas is fairly dry, I can't help but take the risk with that Calypso Teal once again. But instead of spraying it onto the canvas this time, I use an eyedropper thing and pour the paint down the side of the canvas like I did with the copper. And to my relief, it works. The spray paint isn't mixing with the oranges and I get a line of dark teal just like I wanted. When the canvas is dry, I am still not completely satisfied with the way it looks, so I take a plate and use it as a palette and pour the different teals I've been using onto it. I also add a little bit of white for some added shades of color. Then I use my card to bring in the teal and the blue from the edges of the canvas. This way I lessen the effect of the orange and make the canvas more teal again. In a completely random fashion I drop some of that pearlescent copper onto the canvas and then lift it up and slam it down onto the table to get a little bit of a drop shape to the spots. Then as a last effect I take the palette with all the paints and my card and add some lines of color to the entire canvas. I'm focusing mostly on picking up the lighter colors and the white just to give this a little more dimension and life. Then I let the painting dry and I'm calling this done. It doesn't resemble the idea in my head in the slightest, but I'm honestly still happy with the way it turned out. So that was all for now, and if nothing comes in the way, I will be back next week with a new video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again next time.